And I'm saying this so that you know how to invoke spiritual ordinance. I think last year, myself and my wife, if the year is 300, that's what it is, 365 days, we probably took communion over 300 days. Was it last year or two years ago? We're taking communion every night. Because he said, do it as often as you can. That's the instruction. As often as you can, do it. There was no limit to it. And the power you carry in your mouth as a believer is that he, the Bible tells us that God brought things to Adam to name. And he said, anything Adam called that thing, so it became. God endorsed it. That's the power you have to name a thing. So when you pick up a bread and you say this bread has become the body of Jesus and you are intentional about it, it truly in the realms becomes the body of Jesus because so you have named it. The name you carry today did it not come out from someone's mouth? He said, your name shall be Ehi. And that's it. Someone named it and it went forth. And it stuck. Your name shall be Emmanuel. And it stuck. It's a pronouncement. That's how powerful words are. To change it, see the process you will have to go through. Luke 22 verse 7. Please bring it on the screen. I'm going to be fast with this. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. Next verse. And he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. I need you to look at this and compare it to all you have learned as a believer all your life about Holy Communion. Jesus was about to have communion. See the things he did, he put in place and the instructions he gave. He spoke to Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat proper food. Next verse. So they said to him, where do you want us to prepare? I was hoping to see church or synagogue. He didn't send them to the church. He didn't send them to church. Next verse. The question was, where should we prepare? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered a city, are we in a city? Are we in a city tonight? This is the city of Bradford. He says, when you have entered a city, behold, when you have entered a city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Those days, there was no sat nav, right? There was nothing, no map. to There was no paper to direct people on what. This was Jesus' own sat nav at the time. But this was angelic assistance. These things that Jesus was directing this was angels were already available to make it happen. Because it was the last he was going to take before he heads to the cross. He said to them, behold, when you have entered, go back to that verse. When you have entered the city, a, you will see a man carrying a pitcher of water. So what it means is that the man went to fetch water, right? He's carrying it on his head. Follow him into the house which he enters. So what it means is that once you enter the city, Bradford city center, and you see somebody carrying water, don't talk to the person. That's not the instruction. That guy is meant to be the map. Just follow him. Just follow. Just, anywhere he goes, follow. Sat nav. Just follow. Anywhere he goes, follow. Follow him into the house. Next verse. Then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with the disciples? Ha kato Jesus was going to have the last supper with the disciples. Angels were already on ground, just as they are with us tonight. And he said to Peter and John, when you get to the city, you will see a man carrying water on his head. Follow him. Any house that man enters, follow. When you get to that house, without greeting, without too much pleasantries, just say to the man, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with the disciples? question, who prepared that guest room? Next verse. He said, when they ask the master of the house, then he will show you a large furnished upper room. He said, dear, make ready. Did you see furnished there? Who is this master that owns an upper room that is already furnished? The make ready here is not for them to put 
the decoration is already prepared. It's to prepare the living bread and the wine. That's the make ready. The part they were to play was to prepare what they would eat. But as for furnishing and preparing the place, it was ready before they came. He said, then he will show you a large furnished upper room. I'm going to run a series on the ministry of angels and how they made the ministry of Jesus so easy. If you understand it, there are certain things you won't be hitting your head on the wall too much for. If you know that when you're walking, you are not alone. That you are not alone. I kind of understand it so much that those days when I was traveling in Nigeria for itinerant ministry, on the road, you'll be seeing all manner of accidents. These days, they've managed to fix some roads. Terrible accidents on the road. I will hear a voice in my ear telling me that if the car where you are is to have anything terrible, I'll take you out of it. I felt I could disappear if anything evil was to happen. That's how much I believed in the ministry of angels, that they are with me. This was how Jesus gave instructions to Peter and John. Go to a city center. Follow the man carrying water. Don't say a word to him. Get to a house. When you enter the house, say, where is the room that has been made ready? The Bible says, when they got there, he said, go, go to the next verse. They asked the man, where is the upper room that has been furnished? See verse 13. So they went and found it just as he had said to them. And they prepared the Passover. The room was ready. The room was made ready. They found it the way Jesus said it. And I asked the Holy Ghost, so who was that man carrying a pitcher of water? And he said to me, that was a direction from heaven. Angels. No wonder when Peter removed that guy's ear, Jesus said to him, if only you can see the number that is with us. I can command my father. I can speak to my father. And he will release them in numbers. Peter did not understand who he was with. Because when the high priest, the chief priest, and the soldiers, the Roman soldiers came to Jesus, he was exuding some power that was beyond measure. Because all of them were wearing almost the same clothes, they could not tell which one was Jesus, which one was Peter, who was James, who was Bartholomew. They couldn't tell. Because if Jesus was wearing a peculiar clothes, it will be very difficult, it will be very easy to identify him. It's like if I drop this mic and sit in your midst, if anybody was in here and they say, who is the pastor of this church? The tendency to be confused is very high. Because I'm not dressed like the normal pastor you know. Praise the Lord. Don't worry, I'm abnormal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. I just believe that the anointing is not in the suit. That's my belief. Okay. It's in me. It's in me. The Holy Ghost is in me. It's in me. Hallelujah. So, they were wearing almost the same clothes. But when they asked a question, where is he? And Jesus said, I am. What did the Bible say happened? The Roman soldiers, not just that they drove back, they fell. With all their weapons, they fell to the ground. They could not stand the power that was radiating from him. Because this was happening on the mountain where Jesus always went to pray, Gethsemane. The energy in that place. There's no way those guys could stand the energy that was in that mountain. He said, I am. The same introduction he gave to Moses. He said, when you get to Pharaoh and he says, who has sent you? He says, say, I am. So Jesus introduced himself for the first time since he came. And those who heard it could not stand it. I'm deviating from my message from tonight. Hallelujah. Don't worry, come next week. I'm teaching next week on beware of the Pharisees. Hallelujah. Ah, it will be an interesting one. Beware of the Pharisees. So they went and they found it just as he had said to them. And they prepared the Passover. Next verse. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Next verse. Because of our time. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus said, This is one of those things he has desired to do with you. No wonder he now said, When he is gone, as much as you can, do it 
And anytime you do it, be thinking about me. Do it in remembrance of me. And today we have made Holy Communion. It's a holy thing. Right? Even though the Bible didn't write, call it Holy Communion. He called it Passover. We were the ones who named it Holy Communion. We named it Holy Communion. It is holy because it's eaten before the presence of the Holy One. Right? So there's nothing wrong with calling it Holy Communion. He called it that I have desire to eat. It was proper eating. The Passover with you. And don't forget that this was a there was a typology in the Old Testament where God was also about to deliver Israel. And he said to them the night before, you must go in and have the Passover and eat. And he told them how to slaughter the ram, what they should eat, what they should not eat. It was a proper meal. How we now came to, when you do like this, they put something on your mouth, them, and you walk like you've never seen before, this way, forward. I don't know how we came about it. I do not know how we came about it. If you know how we came about, given where we are studying tonight, you will soon see what Jesus did. I don't know how we came about it. But, that was the doctrine our fathers cascaded, and we ran with it. But clearly, if you look at the scripture, how did Jesus eat the communion? It was dining and whining. There is power in eating together. As a family, if you eat together, there is power in it. Have you ever thought why in major business meetings you see them sitting down somewhere let's go have a coffee let's go eat out let's go do this and as they're eating they are talking real business i went into a major golf golf course golf club i went into where they eat if you see the buffet they finish playing that's where they exchange business cards and they are talking to each other as food is you see them turning their tea and they are talking real business there's power in eating together Anytime I go off my course tonight, people should pull me back because of time. <laughs> Someone should just pull me, just tie rope. Hallelujah. I, I feel like a tank. There's a lot in me to talk about, but we'll pu push that to next week. Then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Next verse. For I said to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He said concerning him, Jesus, this is the last he will eat on earth called Passover. It was a special one. However, when Jesus resurrected and came back to meet them 40 days later, he ate food with them, but that was not a Passover. There was another food Jesus ate with them. But for this one, it was a special kind of food. Next verse. For those of us who are planning to go to heaven, because not everyone wants to go. So just in case you are with me and we're headed to heaven, Jesus said, go back to that verse 16. He will not eat of it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So there will be three major Passovers. The one Israel ate in Egypt. The one Jesus ate with the disciples. And the third one is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those who make it there will be eating in that feast. That's why I said those. Not everybody is going to heaven. Because I met somebody, I, was, I wanted to preach to him. He said, no. Don't worry yourself. I want to see Michael Jackson. That, that, see, it's hell. He told, no, I'm not joking. No. He told me, see, I should not bother. I should not bother that there will be party going on in heaven. That's where he wants to go to. And I should not bother. I shouldn't bother preaching to him. I should not. I, I shouldn't waste that energy. That there's a place he's headed for and you know he's headed there. I shouldn't worry. So not everybody you meet is headed where you're going to. Next verse. We're going to verse 20 or thereabout. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks. It was a cup he took. We have modified it today. Again, I'm questioning a lot of things. I am. That's how curious I am. When I'm studying scriptures, I'm making notes, I'm underlining, and I'm listening to what the Holy Ghost is saying. He took a cup. Proper cup. He gave thanks and said, take this. Divide it amongst yourself. So what it simply means was that 
he carried a big jar, what looked like a cup, blessed it and gave it to them and said, take this and divide it amongst yourself. So the person who was beside him probably, John the Beloved, went round. You know how they serve cup on a big dinner table? Someone is serving cups, and pouring in people's cups. He did that. Next verse. For I said to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. It reminds them again that there's another one coming. Next verse. So they drank first. Then he took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to them. He now said, from bread, he renamed it. Look on the screen. From taking up a bread, he renamed it. He took bread, gave thanks. After he has blessed it, he renamed it. He said, this is my body. Why didn't he say, this is the bread? He said, this is my body. He renamed that bread he broke. He said, this is my body. From that moment when he blessed it, it became his body. Which is given for you. He said, you must do this in remembrance of me. Can I see verse 20? What does verse 20 say? Likewise also he took the cup after supper saying, Remember that he divided it. He divided the, 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 the stuff. Gave them to self. They didn't drink it. So everybody was now holding. We read verse 18, right? Everybody were now holding it. Now he came back to the cup that he gave them, he gave them earlier. And he said, he also took the cup after supper. So that cup that they served, everybody were now eating. They were gisting. They were eating and they were gisting. He now took the cup after supper. All of them recorded this way Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Everybody said, After supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant. I'm about to go into blood covenant with you. I want you to understand what we are doing tonight. To know that once it goes into your body, you are no longer ordinary. That when that blood goes in, he has capacity to transform your life, to heal, to deliver, to set free, and to open your eyes of understanding. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So he made the disciples to partake of the blood that has not even touched the ground yet. He gave them a portion of that blood. He said, take, which is shed for you. When he was saying this, has he gone to the cross? He hasn't gone. He said, which is shared for you. He hasn't gone to the cross, but he's telling them ahead of what is coming. Be the first partakers of it. But he commanded that we must do this as often as we can. I've got 15 minutes to declare God's promises over you. We will take the communion and we will eat together. Hallelujah. How does that sound? Praise the living Jesus. So those of you who are online that I told to get your communion, to get your wine, to get your bread. Um, as a matter of fact, any bread will do. If you can get leavened or unleavened bread, that's okay. Whatever you call it, that is what it is. So, doctrine has done a lot of damage. And I want you that anytime you are studying scripture, say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, reveal to me that which I need to know. Okay? Somebody called me from Israel. Was it last month? I said, bro, Tim, I just got to Israel. Today is Sunday and everybody has gone to work. I said, yes. It's because you are on this side of the world. If you don't travel, you will think that everything is done the way you do it. I said, no, in Israel, our Sunday is their first day of, our Sunday is their Monday. So, their weekend is actually Friday and Saturday. So, the last day of the week is actually Saturday, which is what it is. It was a certain Pope that moved worship of God from Saturday to Sunday being the first day of the week. So, 
both in English diary, in our calendars. Monday, Sunday is the first day of the week. Saturday is actually the last day of the week. So he was surprised. He woke up Sunday morning and he was seeing cars everywhere. Children were going to school. I said, yes, because in Dubai, in Kuwait, in Bahrain, in Israel, in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, Sunday they go to work. Offices are opened. That's their own first day of the week. Again, another doctrine that was introduced to us. And we all bought it. I was teaching them last year how red became the color for Christmas. I hope you know that 65 years ago, red was not the color for Christmas. It was green. Coca-Cola just said to themselves, how can we sell our product with this festival that everyone has come to love? And they introduced Santa Claus. Brought somebody, gave him a cap. Make sure the cap was red. Put white around it. And then brought a green tree close to it. And then pumped over 40 billion dollars. Advert was running for more than 15 years. So that generation of men who knew the color for Christmas died. When you and I were now born, Christmas became red. Until today, it's difficult to tell any of us today that the color of Christmas is not red. Because they condition all of us to believe it so. Always question whatever you hear. And make sure you receive it by the word and that which the Holy Ghost is telling you. Let's rise up on our feet. I said tonight all I'm going to be doing is declaring God's promises. And all I want you to do is to just receive it and say amen. And those of you who are online, you have been on a journey with us in the last seven days. You committed yourself to it because you believe that God had instructed me that you should fast and pray and seek his face and call upon his name. And I know that all your prayers in the last seven days, heaven has heard in the name of Jesus. Before we declare tonight, Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. If you look on the screen, it says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, it's amazing it didn't say when you sing. It didn't say when you eat. It didn't say when you walk around. It, it didn't say when you are listening to the word. It told you specifically what you must be doing when you are asking. He said, what, whatever things you ask when you pray. Again, take note. He didn't say if. He said when. If is conditional. When is certain. You must do it. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. Another thing you must do. Action. Believe that you receive them. He said, if you do these two things, pray, believe, then reception. You will have them. Psalm 34. So, sorry, Psalm 37 verse 4. Psalm 37 verse 4. Psalm 37 verse 4. It says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. I want to believe tonight I'm speaking to those who love the Lord. It's a Friday evening. You could have been playing football, playing chess playing music, cooking, doing anything. Some of you even canceled your shift today because you felt no. This God we are talking about, I can't be an ordinary person. How will I survive in this land? The problems myself and my family have gone through is enough. But he says there must be a place where your delight should be. He said, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. The first action you must take is I must delight in him. The things of God must please you. The things of God must resonate in your spirit. John 14, 13. I'm laying foundation tonight before we declare his promises. John 14, 13. He says, and whatever, it's on the screen, and whatever you ask in my name, what did he say he would do? He said, I will do it. Why is he going to do it? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. So God doing it for you gives him glory. And that is why I know that that which you have declared in the last seven days, it is done in the name of Jesus. 
Psalm 145, verse 18. Psalm 145, verse 18. This is the last place before we declare tonight. He says, The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Ah! Matthew 6, from verse 31 to 33. I just want to hear your amen. That's all I want to hear tonight. Matthew 6, 31 says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? 32. For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly father, he calls him a father. And we don't have an irresponsible father. Your heavenly father knows that you need to pay school fees. He knows you need to pay rent. He, needs, he knows you need sponsorship. He knows that you need to eat. He knows that your dad is not feeling well. He knows everything you can think of. He knows. Next verse. He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. And so, Father, tonight I declare upon your people, you are a faithful father. You are a faithful father. And these words have cried to you night and day in the last seven days. Jesus spent the night before he stepped in. Tomorrow is the first of July. We begin to count another six months. I declare over these ones, Jehovah, they will not lack. They will not lack. Everyone who is under my voice tonight, by the help, by the agency of the Holy Ghost, by the hand of the Holy One, I declare over you, you will swim in abundance. In the name of Jesus, you will swim in providence. Angels will go to work. They will make things easy for you. You will soar, you will not walk. You will fly, you will not crawl. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3. From verse 5 to 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Ah. This is what is required of you and I. To trust him in every circumstance. It's not to cry. It's not to weep. It's not to call everybody. You have spoken to everybody about the problem. Except the one who you need to trust. He said, trust in the Lord. Go back there, please. Psalm 3, 5 to 6. Sorry, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. You must tr trust in the Lord with all your heart. He said, you must not lean in your own understanding. Your understanding will fail you. It will fail you. It will fail you. That thing you think you know what to do, how to do, it will fail you. Next verse. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In everything you do, make sure he's the one leading. I'm not permitted to say this. Yesterday, I got a call. I got a call yesterday. And I was telling my wife that not every good, supposed good door is a good open door. I got a call and they said to me, we need your face in Dubai. That's what they said to me yesterday. I said, what is the need for me? They said, we've got a job for you. The job is 100,000 pounds per annum. If you will agree to go and become our face, an oil company in Dubai, tax free, so what you earn is what you get. We we'll add an extra 20,000 pounds. The message is still on my phone. Is, is they messaged me before I knew it. I sent my number. Are you ready for us to have a chat? I said, yes, I sent it. And the person called me. In the UK here. The person recruiting is in the UK. He said, we need your face there. And I sent a message to my wife. And I said, hmm. I listened to my spirit and my spirit said, no, that's not it. I looked at how much I currently earn that they are taking tax. <laughs> I looked at the tax I'm, I'm paying and now I'm headed to a country where I can fly in and out of the UK almost every weekend if I want because it's 10,000 pounds per month as salary. 10,000 pounds per month. 
That's what it's going to be without tax. And I said no to them. I'm not interested. The spirit in me said no. In all your ways, acknowledge him. I looked at the assignment he has placed before me. I looked at my life. I looked at everything. I said, why is this coming now? And the Holy Ghost said, no, it's not it. And I told him, I'm sorry. Not interested. And the next question the guy asked me, is, is 120 not enough? And I started talking. We'll book your flight. You'll be in a hotel for three months until we get accommodation for you. He started calling other things that, that I need to just say yes. And that's it. And I said no. Not everyone got that offer. Acknowledge him in all your ways. What he would do is that he would direct your path. I will remind all of you here in the next five years how the Lord would have so blessed me. I'm so sure of what I'm talking about. I would have so blessed me that 10,000 pounds would be so infinitesimal that I know. I'm so convinced about it because I heard him say, this is not it. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. I declare over you tonight the strength to lean on the Lord in very difficult circumstance when it seems like your back is against the wall the strength to lean upon the Lord receive it tonight in the name of Jesus the power to acknowledge him the power to say Lord I surrender all it doesn't matter what I'm looking like it's like my pocket is empty that's what I see physically but I know that you fed the ravens. I know you fed the, the birds of the air. I know you fed Elijah. And therefore, I will trust you. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? I can feel the Holy Ghost in our midst tonight. Oh, Father, thank you for coming. Ah! Thank you for showing up tonight. Talk to him. Talk to him. Exalt him tonight. He's impacting lives. He's impacting. He's changing destinies. You will look back after tonight and say, Ah, I'm happy I showed up. Ah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Because of our time, Psalm 34 verse 10. I'm still declaring. Psalm 34 verse 10. The Bible says, look on the screen. The young lions lack. And they suffer hunger. It's telling you that the king of the jungle may lack. The one who is not meant to lack has capacity to lack. But he says, those who seek the Lord, they shall not lack anything good. I declare over you tonight that in the second half of 2023, as you seek the Lord, as you seek the Lord in truth, good things will chase after you in the name of Jesus. Good things will surround you and your family in the name of Jesus. All things are working together for your good in the name of Jesus. Romans 8.32 I'm sorry I, can't, I would have been declaring from my mouth but I want to declare them from the word because that's where the potency comes from when it comes from the word Romans 8.32 He who did not spare his own son that's how much he loved and valued all of us but delivered him up for us all He said how shall he not with him also freely give you all things What is that thing that you have given up hope on? They say sponsorship. They say job. Don't you know, child of God, don't you know that the cattle on a thousand hills, they belong to him. 
they belong to our God. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. If one is going to fall off tomorrow, he knows. Why are you worrying? He said he did not spare his son. The, most, the treasure of heaven. The treasure of heaven, he did not spare him. Psalm 84 verse 11. Psalm 84 verse 11. Look on the screen. It says, For the Lord God is a son and a shield. I declare over you, as you go out, as you come in, in the second half of 2023, the Lord has become your son and your shield in the name of Jesus. The Lord God has become your grace and your glory in the name of Jesus. No good thing will he withhold from you in the name of Jesus. You will walk uprightly. You will walk in righteousness. The Lord will hold your hand. He will open a door before you. And he will say, this is the way. Go therein. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 40, 29. Isaiah 40, verse 29. He says, he gives power to the weak just in case you found yourself at, at the very weakest moment of your life. Have you found yourself, your knees are feeble and weak. You're asking yourself, have I made a mistake? Who brought me here? Why did I choose this course? Why did I marry this person? Why did I have this kind of child? You are at your weakest ebb. He said, he gives power to the weak. Jesus said to the disciples, he that is not sick needs no medicine. He that is not sick needs no physician. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. What he does is that he infuses you with strength. May you have strength in your weakest moment. Receive strength in your weakest moment. The Holy Ghost will infuse you with strength. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord, have you waited on the Lord, child of God? Have you fasted? Have you waited? You were awake at midnight praying. Praying. Lifting up your voice before the Lord instead of sleeping. He says when you wait, what is going on in the realm of the spirit is that you are taking off old wings and growing new ones. He said you will renew your strength. You are shedding off. You are shedding off the old things and new things that are emerging in you. And because you have waited, because you have prayed, because you have obeyed, your strength is renewed in the name of Jesus. You will mount up on wings like the eagles in the name of Jesus. You shall be high, you will not be low. You shall be high, you will not be low. You will run, you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 43 verse 2. Ah. He's telling you that there will be trouble times. But see what he said he will do. Isaiah 43 verse 2. He says when you pass through the waters... So that rent you couldn't raise. He knew. He knew. He didn't say if. He said when. So it means there will be moments when things are not working the way you plotted it. But he made an escape. He said when you pass through the waters, what did he say will happen? I will be with you. So how long you stay in that circumstance is determined by you being sure of who is with you in that circumstance. And through the rivers, he said they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be born, nor shall the flame scorch you. I declare over you that as you step into July tomorrow, whatever water the enemy throws at you, the Lord is with you in the name of Jesus. If you go through the rivers, you will not be overflown in the name of Jesus. When you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall come near you, nor your dwelling place. Know your family. In the name of Jesus. 
Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, for I know the plans I have for you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Says the Lord, not says Tim or better. Not says your neighbor. Not says your qualifications. Not says your parents. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. There is a future and a hope I have for you. There is a future and a hope I have for you. I declare over you tonight. You see that thing the Lord has preordinated. He said to Jeremiah, before you were formed, before you showed up in your mother's womb, I knew you. There was something I wrote about you. That's what it means by future and a hope. That which has been ordained concerning you, that the agents of darkness have covered, nobody was able to rise in your family. And now you are trying to raise your head, they are frustrating you. I declare over you, in the name of Jesus, that which was written concerning you, it finds manifestation in the name of Jesus. Anything that has covered your glory, whatever has stopped everyone in your family, you have escaped in the name of Jesus. I command you to escape in the name of Jesus. You break forth in the name of Jesus. There are families where there is no peace. All effort to restore peace has been a problem. Father not talking to son, son not talking to father, mother not talking. Anytime they go on the phone, it's quarrel. You think it's ordinary. Satan knows that the day all of you unite together, the day you unite, that you become an, an informidable force. He knows. So he, he planted the seed of discord, the seed of pain, the seed of confusion, the seed of quarrel, acrimony in the family. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 because of our time. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. Please look on the screen. This is a scripture you are going with into the second half of the year. Please, when you get home, go to YouTube. You can always watch it and get the passage. Don't bother writing. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 is the scripture I am giving to you as the man set over you in this house. That this is a scripture accompanying you as you go. Memorize it. Be conscious of it as you walk around. He says, And the Lord, He is the one that goes. Is that not a present continuous tense? He goes. Meaning that He leads the way and all you do is follow. He is the one that goes before you. And not just that He has gone and has forgotten you. The Bible says He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. Just to reassure you, he now said to you and I, he said to the root of David and to everyone who has joined us tonight, that he will not leave you, nor forsake you. I therefore declare over you tonight, that the Lord, Lord means owner. That's why you have landlords, owners of lands. He is the Lord. That your Lord, he goes ahead of you in the second half of 2023. And he's with you in the name of Jesus. Jehovah is with you in the name of Jesus. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not abandon you. He's beside you. He is in you. He's with you in the name of Jesus. I declare that you shall fear nothing. You will not be dismayed. In the name of Jesus, your heart desires are granted. The Lord will push you forward. I command you to go forward. Step into your destiny. No more delay. No more delay. No more stagnation. In the name of Jesus, you will serve the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your spirit. It is well with you. In the name of Jesus, things are working for you. Things are answering to you. In the name of Jesus, your face will favor you. Your voice will favor you. Your steps are ordered. Your heart is right. It is well with you. In the name of Jesus, I build a wall of fire around you and around your household. I build a wall of fire around you and around your household. No evil shall come near your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, essence of days. In Jesus' mighty name.